Hello everyone, today we're going to be learning about the mean value theorem which says that if f of x is continuous on the interval, on the closed interval a comma b and differentiable on the open interval a comma b then there is always going to be some number c where the slope of the tan line is equal to the slope of the secant line. As we can see in the graph, we have the y-axis and the x-axis. And where we try, what the mean value theorem allows us to do is to find the number c where the slope of the secant line and the slope of the tangent line are going to equal each other. In other words, it's going to be the, as we have been learning, the derivative it's equal to the rate of change. So the instantaneous rate of change of C is going to equal the average, average rate of change of the secant line. And when they equal each other, we're going to know that these two lines are parallel to each other and have the same slope. Yeah. OK, so now we're going to do some examples. So we are going to find the number C that satisfies the mean value theorem on the given interval. So first, given this function, which is a quadratic function, so f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 1, and the given interval is 1 comma 5. So first we have to make sure that the function is continuous on that interval, which we know it is, because it's a quadratic function, and therefore it's also differentiable on the same interval. So now we know we can apply the mean value theorem, which is f prime of c is going to equal f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So first we have to take the derivative, the derivative of f of x, which is equal to 2x minus 4, and we're going to set that equal to f of 5 minus f of 1 divided by 5 minus 1. So here on the side we're going to calculate f of b which is equal to f of 5. Remember that they gave us b, a and b on the interval. And once we do 5 squared minus 4 times 5 plus 1 equals 6. And then f of a is going to equal f of 1. When we plug in the 1 to, into our original function, we get 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 1, which equals minus 2. And then we can move on, we can plot these two numbers, then we have 2x minus 4 is going to be equal to 6, because f of 5 is 6, minus, uh, minus 2, which is, because we know f of a is minus 2, divided by 4. Then we just have to solve for x, so we want to isolate the x, and we're going to then add 4 to both sides, and then we're going to divide both sides by 2, which is going to give us x equals 3. And so we know that 3 is going to be the number C that satisfies the mean value theorem on the interval 1 comma 5. Okay, so now we're going to, we have two different functions here, and we want to know which of these satisfy the hypothesis of the mean value theorem. So there are two conditions, right, in order for a function to satisfy the theorem, which are, it has to be continuous on the closed interval a comma b in this case is 0 comma 3 and it has to be differentiable on the open interval 0 comma 3. So in this case this function it is continuous on the interval 0 comma 3 so it meets one of the requirements. Now the second one is asking is it differentiable in the same interval and it is not differentiable because there is a corner point right here. So because it meets this one, this first requirement, but it's not differentiable, then it does not meet, it does not satisfy, actually. The theorem, the mean value theorem. Now, number two, we have this function and we're going to look at it on this given interval. So first of all, we're going to see if it's continuous on the closed interval 1 comma 3. And we know it is continuous, so it satisfies the first requirement. 
And now, is it, is it differentiable on the open interval 1, 3? Yes, it is differentiable. Therefore, yes, it satisfies the theorem. Now our next example is kind of similar to the one that we did previously and it says find the number C that satisfies the mean value theorem on the given interval. interval. So our function is the square root of x minus 4 and the given interval is 4 comma 8. So here we have the graph. Now is, it, is this function continuous on the closed interval 4 to 8? And as we can see here, yes it is. And it's also differentiable on the open interval 4 comma 8. So therefore, since it uh, satisfies the hypothesis for the mean value theorem, we can apply it, and as we know, f prime of c equals f, b, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So then we take the derivative of the function, and we have 1 half times x minus 4 to the minus 1 half times 1, because we apply the chain rule that we already know, and we set this equal to f of 8, because we're plugging in 8, because this is b, minus f of 4, plugging in the a, over 8 minus 4, that we missed it here. And now that we have this equal to each other, all we have to do is, since this is to the minus 1 half, then we can bring it down, and then we uh, plug it into the function, right? We have 8 minus 4, minus 4 minus 4 over 8 minus 4 and this side stays the same then we have the square root of 4 minus 0 over 4 which is going to give us 1 half right now that we have this and we simplify the right side then we can solve for x right so we're trying to isolate x the first thing we're going to do here is since this is um we're going to flip them right so this is going to come to the top, and this is going to come to the top. And then we have uh, 1, right? But we still have the, the square root of x minus 4. And to get rid of a square root, we have to square both sides, which x, um, I'm sorry, 1 squared is going to equal 1. And then we're going to be left with x minus 4. And then we can solve for x. Uh, which is 1 plus 4, and we're going to get x equals 5. So then we know that 5 is the number c that satisfies the mean value theorem on the given interval, which was 4, 8. Now, thank you so much for watching. I hope this information was useful, and this is the mean value theorem.